All right, recording going. How y'all doing? This is United with Nexus Investments LLC. And this week's live conference, we're going to be going over the main topic will be identifying trend changes. And some of the topics that I'll mention during the conversation will be about uh, using futures charts to determine the trend, using black box flow, also known as flow algo. Some like to use cheddar flow. Um, they all pull data from the same source. Ultimately, they just have different interfaces and other features um, within those flow sites. We'll also be talking about using news and social media and using technical analysis to determine the trend as well. So these are all different types of tools and resources that you as an investor and as a uh, strategist, as a trader should be utilizing in order to uh, conduct your homework and research before you uh, invest, right? So no one ever should be blindly investing into anything. You know, we're all part of a group and as a community, we built this this course so that we all can share our ideas and find out the common trend because we all want to get rich, right? Or die trying. All right, so we're talking about using futures charts to determine the trend. So there's a lot of um, websites out there. You don't necessarily have to pay for them, but there's one like investing.com that I brought up that you see on the screen and you can download the mobile app and you can determine you know how the markets are going overall around the world so you can see i just clicked on investing.com i don't pay anything for it you know it's a free uh, subscription and you just click on the major indices you can see how the dow 30 s p 500 nasdaq along with the other uh indices are going there's all the type of tabs there's world indices you want to look at those markets in the C's futures. So everybody's pretty much red. So those different websites that I use um, to order to see how the market is. And, and what really seems like a common trend is um, <clears throat> if futures opens up red, sometimes in the morning they'll, you know, they'll bounce and they'll, that day for that day will be green. And then sometimes if it opens up green, it'll be red. So you just got to kind of like, check the different patterns uh, over time, you know, weekly and stuff like that, try to figure out what's going on. Other things I like to do is I go to my, I go to news, like I'm big on Twitter. So if you don't have a Twitter account, just check out a Twitter account, it's free. And you just add a bunch of people. See, I have built my own little favorite lists here. So I have stock options traders that I, you know, I, I like the material. I have a stocks and crypto list and I got top crypto traders when I was doing crypto. So you can click on these <clears throat> and it's everybody that I deemed who were um, important people that I can get info from. So it helps. I mean, even if I wasn't on, you know, investing.com, you can see that there's people out here just going to post, you know, stuff and news for you. So if you ever wanted to like find out what's going on with Tesla, you just put a hashtag here and you just type in Tesla or at the, at the search menu. And then you click on that and then in everything that everybody's talking about Tesla, articles, updates, you got Trend Spider here, you know, their chart ideas. I just go on here and I check out what's what. You know, you can kind of get a gist of how the market's trending based on articles. You could do a hashtag or you could do a dollar sign. So and I use these a lot as your tools for finding out stuff like that. <clears throat> and what else? Also on my charts, I have to draw a lot of lines and now you can't focus everything on technical analysis because you have to understand that there's three types of um, well, I say you have three types of analyzing, you know, the market and the reactions based on price depends on certain factors. And those three main factors are fundamental analysis, which is basically news. Then you have technical analysis, which are the charts that you see here. And then you have like behavioral analysis. 
and that is the institutional investors. And they're, they're, they're using the trust out of their brokerage companies and their investor investing firms. And they're buying and selling and selling off based on the market conditions, you know, derived from technical analysis and from fundamental analysis. So, and that creates a behavioral analysis where investors just freak out and sell off, say something instance like a coronavirus happens. So you see that I got the one day chart up on, on the S and P futures e mini futures here. And we opened up um, pretty much red. And if I zoom in, you can clearly see here that we opened up down and using, you know, technical analysis, you can kind of gather and you can draw how far we went down, how far we opened up, you know, see 20, $30 down. And then you can see how the price is currently going as of now. So we fell all the way down to the range of 32.89.50, and we grabbed some support around 32.94. And then from long, we've been bouncing a bit, but and I mean, there's other patterns that happen on, on technical analysis. So we'll probably see likely a double bottom here, which will retest support. So once you get like a nice retest, it kind of confirms with like two points of reference that, you know, the market is currently at this is support here. And sometimes you want to see three points, you know, a reference where it has a triple bottom before it starts moving back up towards the upside. And you have these other indicators that we have in other videos. Hi, Vincent, I'm Carl. Hey, Kyle. How are you? My guy's doing the job for you. Yeah, yeah. And this is a small drive. All right, I'm muted. I mean, there's other indicators here, like the momentum indicators that you can find out. But yeah, I always have my futures charts up on, on the left. And on the right side, I always got SPY here. And whenever I'm investing in any stock, I always refer back to SPY to see what SPY is doing overall because of SPY is comprised of the top 500 companies. So if SPY is not doing good, then those top 500 companies ain't doing good. All right, so you always look for futures first, see how they're doing. Then you look over here on SPY to see how overall the top 500 companies are doing at the moment. So, oh, here's another example here of a double bottom. See, we, we uh, headed down here, try to have a balance, headed about down here, and then it retested this bottom support. So you know, currently as we close on Friday, we're, we're at this point for support. Yeah. So These are the things that we that I go through in order to find out how the trend is overall is, is I'm looking at news, you know, social media outlets. I'm looking at, you know, the actual futures charts on investing.com. And I go and I look at my charts and I see where these are in relation to the overall market's been going. And I start drawing a bunch of lines. See, as you can see, I drew these a little bit ago. So this dates back to uh, January 2019, over a year ago. So you can see how futures had traded up. And then once you found this resistance here, it came down and bounced. So now that we can find a support, we came up here, came down here. See, we was able to draw some more support lines here. And this actually held this one point here and one point here held support. And as you can see, this bounced here, bounced here, and bounced here before moving back up again. So you can see that this resist actually became invalid at that point. So you can erase that line. And I like technical analysis because once these prices break these patterns, it starts, you know, transition to another levels, you know, whether it's up or down, and it's creating other new patterns. So as one pattern becomes invalid, in these channels, then you, you erase those and create new ones. So get rid of these old support trends. And all you need is two points of reference to, to draw a line. So have we drew this channel right here? Let's get rid of this, this current trend right here. 
So as you can see, we were able to draw this resistance and this support. So as time went on, it was moving up and down, up and down within the channel, up and down. And how we were here knowing that this was uh, three points of reference and this was actually coming back down again. And everybody was freaking out because futures was, um, was dropping. And everybody wonders like how far is it gonna drop? Well, you know how far it's gonna drop. You can get an idea how far it's gonna drop based on previous support lines. See? You can just draw those. You know, body to body or wick to wick. Um, I like drawing body to body because that's where the majority of the buys and sells are, is at the body of the candles. So if you were a technical analysis trader and you drew this trend line back in August 26, 2019, or even further back, August 6, 2019, when the market was falling right here, the uh, futures market was falling, you could have said, hey, this is our trend line. We're going to last here. And this right here, that was this is back in August. This right here, when it bounced off the same trend line, was October. So that's two months later. And that's why you'll see people in the chat, chat say, hey, this is strong support right now. You know, this is strong support for where, where we're currently at. So as you can see that the market bounced off this support and started trending up. Okay. And then when you get to this resistance line right here, you can basically say, hey, past data says this is the point here. This is a rejection point here. This is a rejection point. So we're going to assume until it's broken above that this is going to be another rejection point and we're going to head back down. So as you can see that it kind of it re it rejected here at the line and then tried to break through and it came back down again. And then it eventually passed the um, resistance point and kept going higher. So how do you know that like a bull market is here to stay at that point in the time is where you draw. See, now you have these trend lines in these channels and you draw horizontal levels here. So this is the last resistance that came down and broke it. And then this is another resistance that's coming down. So then you would draw another level here. So it broke this, went up, and you can say, hey, are we going to get rejected again here or are we going to keep going? and went up higher. Oh, are we gonna reject here like previously happened before? Um, back in November 27th, 29th? Well, as you can see, this candle on 12 December 2019, we broke above this previous resistance level, okay? And now we started moving higher. And now we're still on the uptrend. So you can still invest in, you're still long on the market overall. But now that this has became invalid, and now that this essentially has became invalid. You can draw whole new market lines because now this has trended past the channel. So we're all in a new channel. So now you'll take your, you'll take your um, tools and you'll look for a trend line. If we'll choose it. Oh my gosh. Slow. All right. You take a trend line here. It was the last time there was some support, right? And you just draw. You draw and you create another trim line. So here's your two points of reference here. You do wick to wick, you do body. And then now this support is now gone because we've already created other two points of reference. So once you have your, once you start creating resistance levels, here as we recreate as we saw before you'll start drawing here and you'll go ahead and draw your resistance here and resistance is, is yellow we got support as green okay. okay so now we're in this current situation right here so remember none of these lines are binding you know and we've already broken past these levels so you can get rid of these you're always constantly drawing and redrawing, you know, trying to figure it out. So we got this point support, and then later on, we broke down here as support. You know, I know everybody was freaking out here because it took some time to get grass and move up higher. Um, so you're going to have, you're going to draw your supports again. So you can redraw it. We would have redrawn it here when it came up. Okay. Or 
or you can draw another trim line here, or you can just leave them all. You know, it's up to you. We're just trying to figure out where the bottom is. And that's the whole point of it, is that we're trying to figure out what's the bottom. We want to know what's strong support and where we're going to see it bounce. So if you have to draw several of these, of these and so be it. Thing. And these are all previous supports here. So currently, we already broke down through this one and opened up below even this one here. So now we're looking at support on futures. They're around 382. Yeah, 382 area here, possibly. So, and all this is just hypothetical, you know. What's it really gonna bounce off? I just, we gotta go see. And this is just looking at like a daily time frame here. And you could drop down the different um, time frames, you know, four hour, get a little bit of closer look, you know, trying to figure out where the bottom is. So as you drew your um, what daily trend lines, you can draw your uh, horizontal levels here too. And you're just trying to find the areas where there was a lot of strong support and resistance here. You know, and you want to get your um, horizontal line. You're looking for the last time, there's a lot of support and resistance. Because where you have resistance, when it breaks through, resistance turns support. So it looks like we can really paint this line here as kind of like an area of support. And if this were to hold true, support was around 32.95.25. So. And we're hoping that that's correct because anybody in calls, obviously we want the market to rebound now at this point. So and these are the type of do things that technical analysis traders do. You know, it's not gonna be concrete, you know, binding that, hey, this line says that it's gonna bounce up. It's just probability. You know, this is all mathematics, it's likelihood that something's gonna go up or down. So that's all technical traders are, are showing is the likelihood something's gonna go up or down. All right, and then, so, so far we talked about using social media, you know, to help you find a trend. We talked about using uh, futures like investing.com to find a trend. We talked about using technical analysis to find a trend. And another one that we've been using lately in our group is blackboxstocks.com. And this right here is Flow Algo. Um, Flow Algo, basically, Blackbox and Cheddar Flow and Flow Algo, they're websites that people can subscribe to. And they're, they're taking um, all the institutional investors and what they're betting on. They're, you can see the flow coming in and it's public not information. So I'm subscribed to the site. And as soon as any kind of massive flow comes in, um, we can see it and we can share it with the group here. So. If anybody wants to get ahead and not wait on us and want to head and get ahead and then subscribe to this, they can have a, a $20 off of coupon for your first month. And basically I'm paying a hundred dollars a month to find the flow and see the flow coming in. So I can share it with everybody. And uh, this was the flow as of Friday. So you can kind of see overall as this flows coming in, I can see how the market's going, you know, throughout the day. If there's a bunch of calls coming in, I know that we're like in a bullish market. If I start seeing puts coming in, you know, then I know that something's going on. So you look, there's a lot of calls here. We got a lot of puts. Uh, and you see it towards the end. Oh, this is after market close. You know, you had like 15 minutes to invest in SPY. Everybody bought puts. So I think you have about 15 minutes after market close to buy put. So this tells me right here how the market is overall. If after the market close, you see all of these spy contracts and you see QQQ. And if you want to do your homework, you want to look up what comprises a spy and who are the top companies within a fortune 500. And the top ones are Microsoft and Apple, right? Um, Amazon's a big one in there also follows and, and makes SPY go up or down as well. And QQQ are all tech stocks. So now you're talking about Tesla and all the tech stocks. Not Tesla, but uh, all, the, all the tech industries go into QQQ here. 
So you can click on it further. You can find out. See spy. See these. If you click on spy, and you get all the spy flow for the day here. So buying a bunch of puts here on spy after the market, I could have seen this and been like, oh, okay, everybody's buying um, uh, a spy puts here. And you can see the value of all these contracts coming in. Um, that these institutional investors have been investing in is 113k, 200k, 400k, you know, 107k. So it just varies. But this is another way to show you where they're investing here. And just talk about blackbox, um, stocks.com. They also provide alerts here too as well. Um, these were Friday's alerts here, and basically, you know, some of them were profitable and some of them weren't. So Tesla call, you know, for Friday expiration was the biggest one and it went 600%, they say, but that's peak price. That's if you bought this particular contract on the day of Friday, 10 minutes before close, you went into a 221 900 call at a dollar 50 and sold at a high of 1050, which is crazy to me because brokers companies will, are they're trying to sell your stuff in your positions within 30 minutes or an hour before or any expiration date. So you have to call your brokers company to tell them not to sell your contract because they're selling stuff just to get these kind of gains. But yeah, these are other features on um, this volume here. You got open interests. You have a heat map, um, which is not populating at the moment. You get historical data. There's like a chat group here. So these are all these resources I pay for too, you know, in order to get market sentiment and get, figure out where, you know, everything is going so we can tell the group chat here. Also, another subscription I pay for is briefing.com so I can find out, try to capture all the fundamentals, you know, the news. I try to capture all the upgrades and downgrades. So briefing.com, I pay about 480 a year here. Um, you can pay monthly if you want. And you can find out all the upgrades and downgrades for all the companies every single morning. In fact, we got Shake Shack right here coming up on earnings. You can see that they had a downgrade from a buy to a hold, but a price target going from $82 to $79. So you can look at Shake Shack and say they got a downgrade by SunTrust. Now, if you want to see how Shake Shack did on Friday, you can go to your charts and see how accurate a downgrade and upgrade is. So, I mean, at, because of the downgrade or maybe because the market was just dropping, I mean, they dropped significantly here. Buy that open. You know, I mean, you're really not going to be part of the Wix unless you have, only way to sell or buy down here these Wix is if you already have your orders set already. Buy orders and sell orders already set for certain levels. You can be part of these Wix. But honestly, it dropped, you know, around two and a half percent stock price. So that was very significant before it started moving back up again. And this is why you got to be an active trader. You know, if you're going to go into shape based on fundamentals or upgrades and downgrades, you just can't get into a put and let it ride. You know, because you would have made all this money right here buying 50 contracts on Shaq, right? But eventually you would have lost it back all as a market reverse and came back. So... You got to be active in your investment, especially when it comes to investing in stock options. It's not like traditional stocks where you can just let, it, let your stuff go for a while. But going back to briefing.com, it has other um, insights here. There's earnings results, economics, events. So they have live market. So they have live. Their biggest thing is live in play. So I can keep this chart up on another screen, and I actually get live market coverage coming in as the day goes on. You know, you get top uh, percentage gainers, top percentage losers every single morning. You know, um, you get the earnings results, guidance, history. I mean, you could set alerts to have them sent to your email, but this is their big deal right here is, is live coverage throughout the day. So if I was at home and not a full-time job, I'd definitely be using this a lot more. All right. <clears throat> So, so far I went over um, using futures charts and tools to find your trends, black box flow, social media, technical analysis, to all try to find the overall market 
trend and, and when, when it happens. So 